Hey, welcome, and thank you for joining us here at the Speak Jesus podcast. I'm Dustin Williams, and uh, we just want to encourage you to speak Jesus into every sphere, every area of your life, every area of this world. And I'm super excited. And today is a special episode because I have my very first guest with me, uh, my friend, someone who's a mentor to me, and also somebody that has really brought balance to me in this area, Robert Hodgkin. How are you doing, Robert? I'm doing great, especially because I get to spend time with you. <laughs> oh, you're too kind. Thank you so much for, for joining me. And just, uh, you have been so encouraging to me at, in starting this. And so I want to say thank you and honor you with that. Well, I'm thrilled that you're doing it. And I love your topic. I love the title of your show. Um, we need more Christian media, especially encouraging, empowering Christian media that equips people. And this hour, we so need to be speaking Jesus into everything. There's power in the name of Jesus. There's power in the word of God. Jesus is the living word of God. So I love what you're doing. And I bless you and I bless this show and may it go far and wide in Jesus's name. Well, thanks. Thanks again so much for being willing. Uh, today, uh, we're going to be talking about politics. Uh, some, you know, we all love politics. Not really, but, you know, <laughs> we sure like to talk about them all the time. And um, I will say, uh, as Christians, as believers, um, it can be very, very difficult to navigate how we talk about politics. Uh, and there's so much going on in the world right now that really um, is triggering in a lot of ways to uh, Christians in the body of Christ. We see a lot of our freedoms being taken away um, just from a practical standpoint. But then we also see some things happening even in the church world that are concerning. I, you know, I'm speaking about uh, our neighbors to the north in Canada and, and some of the um, uh, the very public news pieces that have been published with uh, churches being shut down, pastors being uh, jailed and uh, prosecuted uh, for, for having their churches open. Um, and it just seems like uh, the church right now is, is under some persecution. Some of that may be from uh, the election that we went went through here in the U.S. Uh, last year and, and has just kind of carried on. But, um, you know, when it comes to the political spectrum, I don't think that it's worth us just fighting amongst each other. I really think this is an area we need to speak Jesus into. And Robert, this is one area that I feel like God has really given you a, an anointing for. Um, that's really given you a good voice for. And so uh, just talk to us a little bit about uh, what you think our response should be as Christians when it comes to uh, policies that we don't agree with. Well, you know, first of all, all the, all the uh, uh, persecution that you're talking about that we're seeing, it's nothing new to the church. It's fairly new to the North American church, though. It's fairly new to the USA church. But one of the things we have to look at is in Christ, there's always good news. There's always opportunity. And, you know, you've heard me talk about this, Dustin, but I always think about when the disciples are saying to Jesus, come on, man, just tell us what's going to happen. It'd be so much easier if you just tell us, if you just map it out for us. And he does. He says, OK, we're going to go to Jerusalem. I'm going to be arrested. I'm going to be beaten and flogged. I'm going to be found guilty. I'm going to be tried, found guilty, and then I'm going to be executed. Then three days later, I shall arise and everything I've taught you, you're going to step into because I'm making it all possible. And Peter's response to this is, oh, let none of these things happen to you. Now, why does he say that? Because he's focused on the bad news. He gets so focused on the persecution. He gets so focused on the tried or uh, 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 found guilty, flogged, beaten, that he completely misses the good news and the incredible opportunity of three days later, I will arise. Persecution is real. The wickedness is real. The unrighteousness is real. What's going on in our nation is really wrong right now. We need to be aware of it, but we can't be consumed by it. We can't let it control us because if we do, then we can't control it. And it's what we're here for. The church, the first century church was born from the diaspora of persecution. In this hour, we have such an opportunity to speak Jesus into these situations, because that's what we're here for. 
And, you know, we've talked about this one on one, Dustin. We've talked about this in events that we've done together. There's a reason we don't go to home to heaven as soon as we get saved. It's better. I can't wait. But I'm here for a purpose. God hand selected me. He hand selected you. He hand selected, personally selected everybody listening to this to be here now as part of his solution. So, is the persecution real? Yes. Is the are the challenges real? Yes. Is the wickedness and darkness increasing? Yes. But God's really clear in his word how we're to respond to that. We don't have to do this, but we get to arise and shine for our light has come. And when darkness is increasing on the earth and deep darkness on the people, the kingdom of God will arise in us and, and the glory of the Lord will appear upon us. So nations come to our light and kings and queens and senators and congresswomen and prime ministers and members of parliament and fill in the blank will be drawn to the brightness of our shining. The way we do that is what you're teaching and empowering and equipping the people to do. How do we speak Jesus into these situations? How do we speak him? How do we decree him? How do we declare him? How do we live him? How do we represent and represent him in this situation? Because there's so much opportunity right now for God to show up and for us to see revival and reformation in our nations. Yeah, that's so important. And I think the key word that I heard twice uh, just ringing out is opportunity. And I will be honest with you, there's, uh, there's, I have not necessarily aligned myself with looking at all the bad as opportunity, but that's absolutely 100% how we should view it as opportunity to speak Jesus into these systems. And for a long time, uh, you know, the church has been silent on some things and loud on other things. And it seems like, you know, we ourselves at times um, are kind of like this roller coaster of emotion, uh, depending on world events. Uh, something that I so love about you, Robert, is you have traveled the world, you spoke all over the world, and God has really given you open doors into other countries and nations. And maybe you could talk to us a little bit about that, because I see what uh, God is is doing in you through uh, some of the the Asian nations that you've had opportunity to go into, and you've seen you know political systems that you know we talk about freedoms being stripped away here, but uh, you go into other countries that have none <laughs> whatsoever. And so uh, maybe you could talk to us a little bit of what you've seen over the years God do um, as you've been able to go in and just speak Jesus, be Jesus in foreign nations? Yeah, you know, I've been very fortunate to be in different nations and different regions during times of real tumult and um, turmoil from Southeast Asia when coups were going on to um, uh, the United Kingdom during political uh, situations like Brexit to Eastern Europe after, you know, dealing with the fallout of the Soviet oppression. And one of the things I've really noticed is we've seen God do some pretty amazing things from shifting atmospheres of cities and regions to um, giving us opportunity to prophesy over uh, national leaders and uh, members of parliament in the European Union, to God showing up and bringing so much change in situations like the anti-human trafficking efforts that we've done, where government has taken notice of what God has done through our ministry and the ministries we partner with, that the government's all of a sudden coming to the church, coming to ministries, coming to Christians to ask for counsel. That's what I want to see begin to happen in the U.S. One of the most important things to realize is it's all birthed out of prayer. Everything is birthed out of prayer. And all too often, and we all hear this, and we've all said it, I probably said this without even realizing it, we'll say, well, I guess there's nothing to do but to pray. And we have to realize that's a ridiculous statement. The prayer is so potent and so powerful. Speaking Jesus is prayer. Now we speak Jesus, we can declare the name of Jesus, lift up the name of Jesus, but we, and there's great power in that. But we can also speak Jesus remembering he's the word, the, the, the word made flesh, the word made alive, the word made touchable and tangible, the word invading the system of the world and shifting and changing everything. When the whole wide world was given over to gross darkness and Satan actually had control of this realm, God didn't say, oof, 
That's a, wow, I don't know. I, I, that's a little big for me. No, he invaded it. The son of God came as the son of man. So every son of man could become a son of God. And we could now do the works that Jesus did, including invading the darkness and shifting things. And when he wanted to mentor the disciples and how to be really effective for the kingdom, he did not say, when they, they saw that everywhere Jesus went, everything changed. And so they came to him and said, teach us, Lord. But what's really interesting is they didn't say, they didn't begin with teach us how to work miracles, teach us how to multiply food, teach us how to, to heal the sick, cleanse the lepers. That's all coming. That's all inherent to Christianity. We should be doing it. But they said, teach us to pray. And I believe it's because they noticed he would go off, spend time with the Father in prayer, and then wherever he went, everything shifted. And they were wise enough to realize, God, Lord, we know, Rabbi, we know, Jesus, we know, teach us to pray because it all comes from prayer. And then he gives us that amazing prayer that's not only an incredible declaration and decree, it's not only worship, it's not only this incredible uh, uh, actual prayer, but it's when you go deep into it, and we don't have time to do that today, Dustin, but when you go deep into it, like we do in our Intercession 101 course, you see that it's not only an amazing prayer and decree and declaration and petition and praise, but it's a model for how to bring the kingdom into every set of circumstances that you face. So what we have seen happen in other nations is through prayer, through targeted specific kingdom blueprinted prayer that he gives us, we have seen everything shift from um, anti-human trafficking efforts being successful to economies changing to the government all of a sudden seeing, wow, you guys are carrying something and you're getting better results in some of our programs. We want to bring you into that. That's what we need to be doing. The darkness is dark, but there is an opportunity for us to shine light into it. But it's very important, A, that we begin with prayer. That's how we shift the nation. And B, that we, how we go about it. And we really have to be watching over our minds, our hearts, and our words right now. And I'm talking to me more than anybody, because you know, Dustin, we can watch the news and it's, it's irritating, it's frustrating, it's discouraging, it's, mm -hmm. it's, it's wrong. But if I get into that place of this is wrong and I get angry, I actually am becoming part of the problem, not part of the solution. I need to be aware of the darkness. I need to be aware of the corruption and the tyranny and the manipulation. I need to be aware of the efforts of the enemy and his powers and principalities through government, through media, through education, so I can tear them down. But I have to also watch over myself. That's why for me, it's easier to go to another nation because then you, you come in fresh, you come in with God's heart. I've spent over five decades in this nation. It's my nation. And so when I see these gross changes, I really have to watch over my heart, my mind, my, my words. I have to watch over what emotions and what thoughts I give place to, because if I start to partner with darkness in self-righteousness, well, this is wrong and I should be mad about it. Well, we need righteous anger, but righteous anger still expresses itself in the character and nature of the righteous one. Righteous anger is against the powers and principalities in the darkness, not against the people. And even the people who are in league with the darkness, Jesus died on the cross for them. That doesn't mean we support their wicked policies. We stand against them, but we must be praying for them. We must contend for the nation and for the people in the nation with the heart of God. As we stand for righteousness, we need to do it in the character and nature of the righteous just one. That's why we've seen the effects we've seen in other nations. And that's what we need the church to start waking up to in this nation. Yeah, that's so good. And um, you really nailed it. I, I was I was going to bring up the righteous uh, factor because um, so many of us have this deep sense of righteousness. And, and uh, when there's an injustice done, uh, it really causes us to boil, you know, it really causes yeah. us to react with anger rather than uh, react with with love. And um, something that you always say, Robert, and uh, I'm not sure if you coined the phrase, but you were the first person that ever said it to me. So uh, I'm going to say you're the author of it. You invented it. But I would rather be uh, righteous than right, you know, <laughs> and so or, you know, something along those lines. And um, that's always actually stuck to me, uh, especially when I get heated in an argument, whether it has yeah. to do with 
politics or maybe my wife and I are having a disagreement or, uh, you know, my kids have done something that that we're talking through, uh, I will hear, I hear your voice, your audible voice pop in my head and say, do you want to be right? Or do you want to be righteous? You know, because I, I want to be righteous. I want to, I want God's righteousness to live in me. And I think, you know, what we're seeing going on, you know, are we in the end times? Are we not? We don't know for sure. Uh, we know that we're, 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 always moving forward. We're going towards it no matter what. And there's some things in this world that we can actually point out from scripture and the Bible and say, you know, we, we could be entering in cl getting closer to that moment when uh, we are heading towards the end times, which should drive us not to be uh, angry, but to, to really be on our knees and to really be contending for everyone whether we agree with them politically or not because we are we are heading towards a final hour and i believe that we are entering a season in which uh we're going to be able to speak jesus to uh to situations and and even principalities and we'll see them fall and we'll see them crumble and so uh you know that's just something that that i so feel like we're we're moving towards which is so important why we have to speak jesus when it comes to politics uh what's something that you do personally when uh you find yourself maybe getting too enveloped in the news or the narrative that's being put out there what's something that uh talk me through that process because i think our listeners along with myself uh, really want to know how we should position ourselves as believers and as Christians? Yeah, that's a really good question. And, and very bluntly, usually how it works with me is all of a sudden I realize I am not acting in the character and nature of the righteous one. I'm getting irritated. I'm getting discouraged. I'll Usually I catch myself getting angry and not righteous anger, but that, that self-righteous anger, this is wrong, and that person is the problem, and it can express itself different ways, but that's what I notice, and something God spoke to me, gosh, well over a year ago, um, a couple of years ago, actually, um, was he pointed out to me in Genesis 1-3, again, when all of creation is chaos and darkness, when um, it, the, the, everything's a mess, even worse than things are now, God did not deal with the darkness by releasing more darkness. He spoke light, he released light, and he really lovingly reconvicts me on that when I catch myself not partnering with light, but actually giving place to darkness, whether that's frustration or anger or irritation or despair or despondency or hopelessness. Because again, that's nothing like Jesus and we're remade into his image. So when I catch myself with that, honestly, the very first thing I do is usually literally get on my knees and repent. I like to keep short accounts with God. I, you know, that conviction of the Holy Spirit is never fun, but it's incredibly value. It's mm -hmm. valuable to, to, I love something I heard Joyce Meyer say years ago. It's the ouch, hallelujah. You know, you want that ouch. Oh my gosh, I see it. But then you're so grateful that you do. And I repent. And, um, and then I start to speak Moving in the opposite spirit's important. So if I need to, I get in the word immediately. I mean, I, I try to get in the word every single day and things have been very, very busy for my family. We're in a very challenging season right now as my wife overcomes an attack of cancer. My normal devotional time isn't what it usually is. And I've got lots more in my plate than I usually do. And I have found myself a little stressed out and at times reacting to something as opposed to taking authority over something. And so one of the things I do is I will get in the word. And the other thing that I do to help shift the atmosphere in me, because I've got to shift this atmosphere before I can shift this atmosphere, is I intentionally praise the Lord. And when I can feel a heaviness or a darkness on me, the first thing I will do usually after repenting is make myself. I have this little thing I do. Praise the Lord, oh, my soul, and all that is within me, one. Praise the Lord, oh, my soul, and all that is within me, two. And I actually count off to 10 because I find somewhere along the way to 10 by praising the Lord and being intentional by focusing on him like Paul says in I think it's Philippians 4 8 maybe 
where he says he's in prison. He's in an unfair, unjust situation. And yet he's saying, focus on the good things, focus on the beautiful things, focus on the praiseworthy things. Now that doesn't mean be a disengaged, rose-colored glasses Christian. It means if you really want to be effective in dealing with the unjust, dark things, it begins by focusing on him who is light. I always tell people and myself, when I don't know what's going on, or I don't like what's going on, and I don't even understand what God is doing, I always focus on what God is like. And as I focus on God's character and nature, and I realize, God, you're not done with this country, and you're not done with me, even if I just gave place to anger. I, as I focus on God, I'm filled with hope. I'm filled with expectation. I'm reminded that no matter how big the wickedness is in my nation, God is bigger. And then that allows me from that place to step into hope and joy and faith and expectation and that authority that I have in Christ. And then I now I can deal with the powers and principalities. Now I can speak Jesus into this situation from the heart of Jesus by focusing on the character and nature of God. Because we got to remember, we're made in his image. So when we focus on him, we're not only remembering who he is, we're remembering who we are like him, with him, and for him. And that's really the simple process that I go through. Sometimes it's easy, and sometimes I have to do it again and again and again. There are days I have to do that a dozen times in a day, but we've really got to start to see how terrified the enemy is of us. That's why he comes, that's why he knows my weaknesses and he loves to try to trap me in them. And when, when I do step into that trap for a moment, I love the ouch hallelujah. Cause what I'm doing is I'm saying, thank you, God, for showing me. I repent. The blood of Jesus works. I cover those words I spoke or those emotions I allowed. I negate them with the blood of Jesus. And now I'm focusing on you. Now I'm realizing the enemy hit me in this area because I'm called to actually tear this thing down in the spirit and in my nation. If we can start responding like that, we're really going to shift things. But it really does begin with us taking authority over our mind, our will, emotions, our words. And then when we blow it, and we will, come on, we can't put some weird expectation on ourselves to be perfect in this hour. The perfect one came on our behalf because he knows we can't be perfect. That's not an excuse to sin. It's a opportunity when we do blow it to realize I'm not disqualified in my blowing it because I was never qualified in my doing it right. Thank you, Lord, for showing me. I'm going to shift now and specifically in the area that I gave place to the enemy for a moment. Now I'm going to speak Jesus and it's going to go forth and it's going to have impact. Amen. That was so good. And hopefully you all heard every word. And if not, go back and listen again, because I think what you just said in the last couple of minutes, um, we could unpack all day. It, it, it really is that simple. And uh, just as an encouragement and um, kind of a reminder, uh, being frustrated and angry hasn't worked for anybody. And uh, trust me, I'm probably the king of, you know, <laughs> frustration. Uh, but speaking the name of Jesus has torn down strongholds. It's healed the sick. It's raised the dead. It's uh, saved uh, the lost. It's uh, allowed the blind to see. And so we know that works. <laughs> and so let's speak the name of Jesus into all areas. Uh, Robert, thank you so much for joining me today. And uh, how can people get in touch with you and uh, your ministry? Uh, easiest way would be my website, roberthodgkin.com. That's kind of the hub. They can connect with the different ministries I'm involved in through that. They can get all the free media. There's a free teaching there. There's links to the podcast. There's links to the broadcast. But roberthodgkin.com, there's all sorts of great stuff for them there. That's the easiest way. Yeah, and you're you're right in the middle of, you You have a teaching out there, but you're kind of refining it called Revivolution. And that's going to be dropping pretty soon. And so uh, if you're interested in shifting a nation, um, uh, I, I highly recommend it. I'm going through it right now and it's blowing my mind. So Robert, thank you so much. I appreciate you and I honor you. Um, would you mind uh, just, just saying a quick prayer for, for, for our nation, uh, for our political system, not just here in America, but around the world? 
Yeah, Lord, we thank you that we created that you created this nation and every nation with a plan and a purpose. And God, we come into agreement with that right now. And Lord, as your people in the earth, we cry out over our nations, Hosanna, Hosanna, Hosanna. We welcome you, Jesus. We want you, Jesus. We worship you, Jesus. Come, King Jesus, and rule and reign first in us and then through us in our nations. Teach us how to take our nations back in the spirit, God. Teach us how to lay hold of the mighty weapons we have in you to tear down the powers and principalities that are trying to turn our nations to darkness. You are more than enough, Jesus. So we praise you. We worship you. We want you and we welcome you into our nations. King Jesus, come in. King of glory, come in. King of righteousness, come in. Lord, invincible in battle, come in and win every battle in us and every battle through us on behalf of our nations that you created for your plans and purposes. Amen. 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 Thank you once again. And thank you for listening to us today, whether you're listening on our podcast or watching this. And uh, if you'd like more information, uh, check us out on Facebook, Speak Jesus Group, and you can join that group. And it's just a community of believers encouraging one another, praying for one another, and, uh, you know, reminding each other to speak Jesus into every area and spectrum of our lives. God bless you. We'll see you soon. 